Like, Does it ever disturb you to think that Hello Kitty makes seven billion dollars a year? What the fuck? And she seven doesn't have a deal. Do? No, no, no. The seven billion dollar part is not the big deal. It's the fact that she makes seven billion dollars a year, but she doesn't have a mouth. Holy shit! I like, she has no mouth. I'd like to earn seven billion a year without a mouth. She is like the highest tier of I have no mouth and I must scream. Okay, right. you don't have a mouth. But you get seven billion new dollars every year. Would you still just sit in your room and shit post all day? Well, having a nice computer would imply high speed shit posting. So yes, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I guess technically it wouldn't be Excalibur because Excalibur is a straight sword, whereas this is a saber, which is curved, but I pulled it out of a flaming pile of rocks, so I'm gonna call it Excalibur anyways. <laughs> You can find it over in this area, just north of the sea flag, at the very top of the map, next to a tree. And if you're quick enough, you can sprint in and out without dying. But I'd recommend using a vehicle. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Now, I don't think it's somehow gonna make you into a wonder weapon wielding god, because it's not broken OP or anything, but it does have an extended range of about five to six feet. And unlike the regular saber that typically requires two hits to take somebody down, this Excalibur here always one shots somebody from any angle without having to enter the takedown animation. That is yeah. why I brought along. Saber. be careful while you're using it, because the saber does not respawn, and theoretically the only way to prevent it from disappearing is to make sure that someone else picks up your kit once you die. And I happen to have finally taken a stroll in the behemoth, which was certainly surprising to me, because everybody expects the driver to be the only one slaying the opposition into oblivion, but I don't think that's the case. Hey, does anybody want to switch seats to me? I kinda hate driving this piece of of course, as the driver, you have access to the gigantic cannon, but it's not a gunner seat on the Death Star because it has a very low rate of fire, it's got a significant drop on the projectile, and if you've got a crafty assault player on the other team, he can disable your turret. Hope insurance covers this shit! The major advantage that you have in this thing is that you're invincible for at least 10 to 15 minutes. I'd even be willing to bet that the side gunners kill a lot more people than you do because of their sustained rate of fire and lack of constant reloading. And for the record, the behemoth never wins you the game. Like, you're gifted the behemoth because you're getting smashed, and although it may soften the blow 10 times out of 10, that team still ends up losing. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Quick side note, by the way, the hammer does not do damage to the behemoth much to my dismay. I tried non-stop to flip this thing, but it can't be done. It's like an invincible warthog that automatically flips itself, but if you happen to break the bridge, your character can die by debris, which I found out the hard way. Do a flip! But I must say, if you haven't already been cheesing by being a bridge monster, now is the time to start. Because on both sides of the bridge, there are perfect vantage points of enemies coming from C, D, and E. This spot right here is the perfect combination of cover and maneuverability. Because you can even run up the flank to capture B, and if anything gets too chaotic, you can just dive into the water. Later, nerds! Ninja! My favorite weapon to use on the bridge has to be this new LaBelle sniper rifle, which I'm sure you recon nerds are already gonna love because of the reload animation. That's pretty neato, right? Load, 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 pull back, load, push, I love it. Locked and loaded, and then reloaded. Gun references. You're able to unlock both the version with and without a scope with relative ease by getting spot assist with the flare gun, headshots with the Model 1895, 50 Gewehr kills, and my personal favorite, 
binocular spot assists. I've got you in my sights. Now, so many people write off the binoculars without understanding what's so special about them, so allow me to fill you in. When you spot someone normally, just by pressing Q, a small red icon does pop above their head, telling your entire team, hey, there's a nerd of that particular class right over there, but that's it, and it usually wears off once they break the line of sight. But if you spot someone with binoculars, it's an advanced 3D spot that gives you an entire outline of the player model or vehicle they happen to occupy, so it's much more advantageous. That's pretty neat. And as an added bonus, while you're wearing them, you look like you've got the long spherical eyes of Mr. Krabs. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> The other part of unlocking the Lebel that's hilarious is that the weapon that you're forced to rack up 50 kills with, the Gewehr, is arguably better than the Lebel itself. Yeah, you'll unlock and start using the Lebel only to want your Gewehr back anyways. I damn it don't want to use this piece of shit. The most glaring difference between the two is that the Gewehr has a much faster bolt animation, but fewer rounds per reload, whereas the Lebel is slightly longer on the bolt, yet has a higher capacity. But the new weapons aren't even the most talked about item in the CTE chat, because everyone and their sister is complaining about the aircraft versus the anti-air, and I think we've all suffered the wrath of an Iceman pilot at some point in this game. No! I don't want that. Let me get it out of the way first off, that if it's a toe-to-toe, pound-for-pound, -to -toe, -pound, ace AA gunner versus ace pilot, the pilot wins every time. Like, theoretically, let's say that an ace pilot cloned himself and then faced off against said clone, he's in the aircraft and this guy's in the AA gun, the pilot wins every single time. So even in a completely fair fight with completely equal skill, that pilot is going to kill his clone or replica every single time unless he makes a mistake. There were a couple guys that I played against that quickly learned the location of the AA guns and could absolutely run a train on that specific flag as soon as the round started. Eat shit, you fucking sweaty AA nerd. So although the AA was nerfed, if you can manage to hit your shots around the pilot area instead of the wings of the tail, that's the swiftest way to take them down. I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of my 45 kill streak. Even if you don't have maverick piloting skills, because I sure don't, you can still rack up kills by being the gunner in a bomber. Because if you play your cards right and take down the AA on each strafing run, you are open to lay waste to the rest of the opposition. That's about it. Be sure to tune in next time when I have a jaded, contrived identity crisis about whether or not I should upload Rainbow Six Siege or Battlefield. Goodbye.